Hey guys, so today I'm going to be telling you guys how to get out of a reading slump and I'm also going to tell you guys about the books I read ever since I got out of my reading slump. Just a warning, this video probably won't be as informative as my other videos, but that's because I'm sick, I'm tired, and I have a ton of schoolwork to do, but I still really want to get a video out because, you know, this is kind of fun. Um, so yeah, like and subscribe, I guess. So recently, I've been in a bit of a reading slump, and because of that, I sort of wasn't able to hit my story graph goal, you know? That's also partially due to the fact that I kind of didn't really want to log all of the books I read. Um, but anyway, yeah, I have since gone out of that. Um, and so here's some advice if you want to get out of a reading slump. Sorry that this is the most like basic piece of advice ever. I know everyone says to like romanticize reading or studying or self-care or whatever, but you know why everyone says it? Because it works. Anyway, so the way I got out of my reading slump was actually kind of a funny story. Not like funny haha, but funny interesting. So I wanted to start this YouTube channel, right? And I needed to do some market research, which basically meant that I was binging booktube and studytube videos. And I was watching all these videos and I was like, hey, you know what, reading? kind of cool. Sorry, I thought that would be like a more interesting or longer story somehow, but you know what? I'm keeping it in the video because it illustrates my point pretty well. So yeah, if you want to get back into reading, then try to romanticize it, you know, watch booktubers, read books by candlelight, or just buy books with pretty covers, stuff like that. Another thing you can do to romanticize reading is to rearrange your bookshelf in rainbow order, which is something I did really recently. And I have a weird amount of white books, which I really didn't expect. Like there's more white books than black books. And there was also like a ton of red books, which is just surprising. I didn't realize red was such a powerful color in the book publishing industry. Another thing you can do if you're in a reading slump is to read audiobooks. Um, I think that they're really helpful because you don't really need any mental energy to read them, you just sort of sit there and listen, whereas with actual books, you have to, you know, focus and make sure that your eyes don't stray from the words on the page. Because you can always listen to audiobooks while doing something else at the same time. And this is what I did a lot during the winter break. I used to go rollerblading with my dad while listening to audiobooks because normally I listen to like podcasts or music and this time I was like, okay, let's switch it up. And it was really fun, honestly. This is such an obvious piece of advice, but I feel like everyone needs to hear it because no one really takes it seriously. Stop feeling guilty about not finishing a book. Like, who cares? Who's gonna judge you for it? Who's gonna even know if you don't finish a book? You don't have to like tell anyone. I know that you might feel guilty because obviously you spent money on the book and you want to make sure that you get your money's worth, but honestly, if it doesn't bring you joy, then don't do it. Don't read the book if you don't really enjoy it because you're just going to resent reading. What you should try to do instead is read a different book and come back to that book later once you feel more up to the challenge. Forcing yourself to read a specific book or a specific genre of books really isn't going to help anyone. It'll just make you resent reading. If something doesn't bring you joy, throw it away. Marie Kondo said it, so it must be true. If you feel really, really bad about not finishing the books you paid for, then you can try to buy ebooks instead because they're a lot cheaper. Or you can just get a library card and get books for free. Essentially, what I think you should try to do is read 50 pages of a book. If you like it, then great, just finish it. If you don't like it, then Put it down, you know, stop reading it, find another book, and you can always come back to that book once you feel ready. It's a really good idea to know or have some idea of what sort of book you want to read after you finish your current book. You might be on a roll reading tons and tons of books, but if you don't know what you want to read next, then you might lose that momentum. This section is really short, but there really isn't much to say, you know, just have another book ready. Try to read books that make you excited to read them, you know, books that bring you joy. If you're really excited about the book that you're currently reading and you're really excited about the book that you're going to read next, then you'll never lose the motivation to keep reading. There's a bunch of ways to get really excited about reading books, but my favorite one is asking friends for recommendations because people will always tell you such passionate things about the books that they really like. It'll be the best reviews and it'll make you really excited about reading that specific book. Another way is to do research about the books before you read them. I do this a lot with the movies I watch. I read their Wikipedia page, avoiding the plot section, obviously, obviously. I read about their cast and production process to really get more excited about watching that movie. I feel like knowing more about the media or the book that you want to read just makes you more excited to read that. 
If you watch the movie before reading the book that it's based on, then you'll be so much more excited to read the book. It's something about seeing the lines in the book that you know from the movie that just makes you so much more excited to read the book. So I thought I would show you guys the books I read to get over my reading slump. A lot of them are non-fiction more than usual, and that's because in my English class we're starting to do English language paper 2, which is about non-fiction and writer's methods and all that jazz. So I wanted to read more non-fiction to be ready for the class discussions and stuff. So the first book I read was Freakonomics by Stephen Dubner and Stephen Levitt, the two Stevens. Also, I did read this as an audiobook, so that's why I don't have the physical book with me, but we can just like pretend it's here, you know? So I absolutely love the Freakonomics podcast, and for that reason, I've been meaning to read the book for a really long time. And essentially what Freakonomics is about is it has chapters in it explaining the economics of basic everyday things and I find that really interesting. So the topics it covered were things such as the economics of parenting or the economics of names and I found that really interesting, you know, just random things and how the economy is involved in that. And you learn a lot of things that you really wouldn't have thought of before. It's really nerdy, but I absolutely love this genre of books. I just love the economics analysis. That's such a nerdy thing to say, but it just, it's true, okay? I love noise, I love freakonomics, I love the y-axis, I have noise right here. They're just so interesting to me. I just love knowing things that other people don't really know about. I first got into the genre by reading noise, and it's a really funny story. Um, so this is about how random everyday things can impact human judgment, and it's really interesting. One of the things it talks about in the book, sorry, I'm on a bit of a tangent here, but you know what, I just, I find it so interesting, um, is that for example, if you ever get arrested, which, you know, let's hope not, if your hearing is after lunch, then you're much more likely to get acquitted than if your hearing is before lunch, and that's because judges tend to be more happy after they've finished eating their food. It looks really thick and boring, it's like 400 pages, and it's a really big book, but it's really, really interesting. I love this. And I love Freakonomics as well, they're both just really good books. And side note, Stephen Dubner, I love his voice, it's just really calming for some reason. He just has a really great energy, which just matches the work that he does. Um, Yeah, so I would say that Freakonomics is a 4.25 star book. It's not life-changing, but you know what, I loved it. It's a great read if you're into like economics or stuff like that. Another book I read was Uncommon Knowledge by The Economist. Now, this was disappointing, okay, because I expected something like Freakonomics, you know, I expected in-depth economic judgment about random things, but instead, these were just, you know, really short articles about things like, you know, like, oh yeah, syntaxes, and this is, you know, this is one of the longest essays in the book, it's two and a half pages, well, not really two and a half, because it's got a graph, um, but yeah, Australian Economy, one and a half pages. That's kind of, I don't know, I just expected more. And I guess that's my fault because I don't really look at the book when I was buying it. I was just like, oh yeah, this is something like Freakonomics or the y-axis, I'll get it. When it comes to articles, I really just prefer long reads with lots of analysis, such as like, you know, things like The New Yorker. I really love their articles. Um, with this, I think I was just disappointed, you know? Every single article, when I read it, I was like, oh, great, tell me more. I really want to know more about this topic. And it just didn't tell me, you know, it just stopped at like the surface level analysis. And that's great, you know, if you're into that, then maybe you'll like this. If you really like small snippets of interesting things, then you'll like this. But it wasn't for me, you know? And for that reason, I gave it two and a half stars. You know, I was kind of being generous. I didn't like it, but you know what? It's average for me. It's not really the writer's fault, not at all. It's more my fault for having these expectations. So the next book I read was Poisoner in Chief by Stephen Kinzer, and so I also read this in audiobook form. This was so good. Also, there's so many books by Stevens. There's six books on this list, and three of them were written by Stevens. So it's about the history of poison and mind control and various experiments like that by the US and other governments as well, but mainly focusing on the US, and it's all tied together through um, the lens of the life of Sidney Gottlieb, who was a spymaster for the CIA. He was sort of like the mastermind of the MK Ultra experiment. He's a really, really interesting figure, absolutely terrible, immoral person. 
Um, but it was just really interesting to learn about all this stuff. This was actually recommended to me by my history teacher because we're doing the Cold War and this is sort of related to that. And it's so good, honestly. She's a fantastic teacher. This is a fantastic book. Great recommendation. This is so interesting, so macabre. It's so terrible what some governments did that this book talks about. It's just so sad to hear about it. Genuinely one of the saddest nonfiction books I've ever read and I never expected to say that sentence, but yeah, it was really, really sad. Overall, 4.0 stars. When I first started reading this audiobook, the reader's voice, it was really like aggressive and American. And at first I was like, uh, no. But you know what? It sort of really fit the topic. It was really fitting for the subject matter because like, you know, it was a serious topic and he had a very serious voice. Um, that's just a funny little side note. So another book I read was A Confession by Leo Tolstoy. And this is sort of like a memoir or a personal history of his experiences with God and religion. It's very reflective and beautiful and sad. It really perfectly tied together metaphors with personal experience and, you know, philosophical thinking. And it's really interesting. It really scratched my itch for like religious philosophy. I don't know why I had a craving for that. I just did. This was so good. I, you can tell that I've tapped some bits of it. I just, I really liked it. It was really interesting. I'm not going to tell you more because I don't want to get like controversial on this channel, you know, nice book. Nice book. Solid, five stars. Very good. I liked it. Maybe you won't like it. That's okay. So now I Heard You Paint Houses by Charles Brandt. This was actually a Christmas present. Very good. Oh my God. Loved this. So I read this because I watched The Irishman and it was so, so, so good. Oh my God. Martin Scorsese, that man is just so talented, I swear. Movie, so good, so sad. I cried and I barely ever cry at movies. It's just... So this and the movie follow the life of Frank Sheeran. He was a hitman for the Teamsters union slash mob. It was really, really good. It was really informative and really sad at some times. I really loved seeing um, the lines from the movie in the book. I highlighted a bunch of them. Yeah, see there. Um, it was really, really sad, you know, nice and reflective. However, I do have something controversial to say. I'm not sure that I would have loved this as much if I hadn't watched the movie. It feels really mean to say because I love the movie, I love this book, but the main driving force in reading this book was because I had watched the movie in the first place. The writing style itself was very good. Most of it is reflections, so like quotes by Frank Sheen himself. And then you've got like interjections from the author, Charles Brandt. You've got like a bunch of photos here. Um, it's a really good book. However, was it my style of book? Not really. I probably wouldn't have finished it if I hadn't watched the movie. Um, but you know what? Solid good book. If you like true crime, if you like biographies, if you like nonfiction, you'll probably like this. But I probably wouldn't have picked this up if I hadn't watched the movie in the first place. But if, if you have watched the movie, read this. It's very good. If you haven't watched the movie, please watch the movie and then read the book. Solid four stars, you know? Good book. Another Christmas present, Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. I love the movie so much. David Fincher, first of all, so talented. And Rosamund Pike was perfect for the role. The book was so, so good. I genuinely, I just couldn't put it down. I like, like, I was brushing my teeth at the same time as reading this book. I just wanted to get through it. Oh my God, it was so good. I, when I was going to school, I was like, oh my God, I have to get home quick. I need to read this. And it's not even because of the suspense. You know, I've watched the movie. I've read the screenplay. I already know the plot inside out. It's just because it's written so well. Like it's so lovely and it's so descriptive. If you're doing your English language GCSEs, read this. Like genuinely, the mix of a narrative and description, so good. And Gillian Flynn, such a talented writer. She wrote the screenplay as well and it translated so well. And just a little like interesting thing to note, I feel like Amy Dunn is really different in the movie and the book, not like really different, but I feel like she's much more sympathetic. It's much more easier to empathize her in the movie than in the book because in the movie, you don't really get her inner dialogue. Um, and in the book you do, it's really nice to see more of her side of the story because the movie is more like, you know, objective. The inner dialogue, oh my God, so callous, so, so good though. The feminine rage, amazing. Definitely a five-star book. Like I had to go through all of my books that I've read this year in the story graph and I had to like downgrade them a couple of stars because this was just so good. I had to make it stand out. So yeah, that's all the books I've read recently. I hope my advice has helped you if you're going through a bit of a reading slump and I hope you enjoyed my really frantic reviews of the books I've read. Tell me in the comments what books you're currently reading or what your favorite book in the world is and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.